So joining us now to discuss coffee's ever increasing popularity is Andrew Hetzel. He's a coffee market and value chain specialist. Thank you very much for your time, Andrew. Now, what is the main point of International Coffee Day? Is it just a marketing idea or is there something more to it? Well, it's a recognition of one of the world's most popular and, and certainly beloved beverages, something that, um, you know, contributes to the livelihoods of more than 100 million people in practically every country in the world. So it definitely deserves its own day for some recognition and a chance for celebration. Now, China's coffee culture is growing. Is this a new phenomena, do you think, or just a natural progression of globalization? Why are Chinese people drinking more coffee? It's a, probably a combination of the two. I, I think it's um, the availability of more disposable income. It's uh, an element of globalization. It's also uh, just a natural progression of uh, beverage consumption. You see that many post-industrialized civilizations or, or countries, I should say, are um, increasingly moving towards coffee, uh, even tea drinking nations like China, like India, and, and formerly like the UK. Now, Starbucks is opening its 6,000th store. Tim's China, the operator of Canadian coffee chain Tim Horton in China, is seeking to reach 2,750 coffee shops in China by 2026. Is the coffee industry mostly controlled by international markets in China? Well, it definitely is in the uh, the urban centers of Beijing and Shanghai. Uh, once you get to the the second and third tier cities, it's mostly smaller independent shops. Um, you know, in fact, you find that it's in ninety percent smaller shops once you're outside of the the major urbanized areas. Um, so definitely, there are large uh, chains in the cities. But one of the trends that you're seeing now is that. Uh, new domestic chains are increasingly um, opening in those cities as well to compete with the international chains. So that's the, the latest trend that we're seeing. I was going to say, what, what kind of industry does China have of its own rather than just chains? Is it also growing coffee beans, is it mostly importing those coffee, coffee beans, then producing the coffee in-house? How is the industry evolving and what is it doing to China's economy? Yeah, it's a combination of all those things. Um, I, I don't have employment figures on it, but I imagine it's becoming a, a much, much larger employer by the day. You've got, of course, the hospitality and retail sector. You've got the importing and roasting and distribution. And also there's a fair amount of coffee that's grown in Yunnan um, and uh, Hainan um, areas that is consumed both domestically as well as exported as a, as a cash crop. So it's, a, it's becoming an increasingly significant component of, of the economy. I mean, when you think about China and much of Asia, really, you think about a very strong tea culture, the presence of tea throughout the, the daily lives of Chinese people, I imagine. Do you ever imagine a world in China where coffee might actually take over that traditional culture of tea drinking? <laughs> Uh, tea drinking is very deeply rooted in Chinese culture, and there's no reason that it can't uh, continue harmoniously with coffee consumption as consumption grows in coffee over the, the next several years or decades. Um, I, I don't see, you know, it's, it's dangerous to, to uh, say never, but I, I don't see coffee, or sorry, tea consumption ever going away eventually <laughs> in China. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Right, really appreciate your time there, Andrew. Thank you for that. Andrew Hetzel there. He's a coffee market and value chain specialist. Great. Thanks so much.